second time. Fantastic. Hey, we're back here with Rachel Maddow. Okay, you have, uh, you have uh, the new book. It's called A Blowout. There's a subtitle here I want to get right. Corruption, Democracy, Rogue State, Russia, and the Richest, Most Destructive Industry on Earth. The Petroleum Industry. Yes. Okay? Yeah. So, oil and gas guys. Good guys? Uh... I mean, yeah. Rex Tillerson, by comparison, <laughs> seemed like an angel. Yeah, I mean, it is, it is... You look back at Rex Tillerson, and I feel like we sort of lost track of this, but Russia helped Trump get elected right after they did a half-trillion-dollar oil deal with Rex Tillerson. And then Rex Tillerson became the person in charge of U.S. foreign policy yes. under Donald Trump, who Russia just helped install in power. I mean, that itself is freaking weird. And... I was interested in that. Um, I also got interested, I don't really, I didn't start off knowing anything about the oil and gas industry, but I'm interested in the fact that Russia has been taking all these wild pitches all over the world, including at us in 2016. Mm -hmm. Like, why are they the kind of bad actor that they are, that they're willing to do stuff from a position of weakness that doesn't seem like they're using any of their strengths? Like, what's, and I, I, what I started to realize is that if you look at Russia's economic weakness, that's a big part of why they throw these wild punches. It's also weird that they're so economically weak because they float on a sea of oil and gas, which is a very remunerative thing. And that sort of got me to the thesis of the book, which is about you know, where you have oil and gas in the world, it tends to screw up your country. Um, and in Russia, it's not only resulted in them being weak and having not many other options for getting their way in the world, it's also meant that they use oil and gas as a weapon to corrupt other countries that they want to keep weak around them. That's part of what happened with Ukraine. It's part of the backdrop of the impeachment scandal. Uh, and it's also a way that they've threatened even Western Europe by turning the, turning the lights on and off in Europe uh, to exert themselves. And so but why, I think why it helps. is Why, if your country is rich in natural resources, why does that end up being bad for your country? Is it because just extraction industries themselves don't sort of trickle down to the population? They just go to get skimmed by the corrupt government? That's basically it. It's an academic concept called the resource curse, which is about this paradox, that in countries where you have a bunch of natural resources that are going to get extracted and sold internationally, even though that produces a whole bunch of revenue, it tends to go to the elites and to the government, who then have, as their life's mission, staying in power so they can keep getting those revenues for themselves. And it means that governments in countries like that stop serving all the other needs of their people. So what you does, get a lot of oil money, and then all of a sudden your like, infant mortality rate goes up, and you get poorer as a country. What does Michael Jackson's memorabilia have to do with the oil and gas industry? <laughs> It's a really good chapter of the book, I think. First of all, I'm really excited about it. I had no idea what you can buy that Michael Jackson wore or touched. <laughs> Whoo! Um, <laughs> but the bottom has fallen out of that market a little bit. By yeah, the way. that's a weird way to put it too. Um, in Equatorial Guinea, which is a small, poor country in Africa, they discovered oil. They got like $25 billion in oil revenue dumped on them over a very short period of time. And it was one of these countries that was just an exemplar of the resource curse. The country got poorer. The healthcare and education needs of the people got worse. Poverty went up. The corruption got much worse. And ultimately, the, the, the people in that nation didn't benefit from any of those revenues coming in. But the president of the country became richer than Queen Elizabeth. His son became like one of the foremost collectors of Ferraris and supercars in the world. Mm. And he bought out all the, mem all the Michael Jackson memorabilia there was to sell. Um, and like, that's what, what happened. Like what did he get? Like, a, 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 like crystal encrusted gloves. The glove? The glove. There's never gloves, it's only it's gloves. It's a, a glove, a relevant glove. <laughs> there were like st trophies and things that he touched and hats and things he wore. I mean, it's just it's kind of... When you consider what else was going on in this country, that's where the oil revenue went. And that's kind of an exemplar of what happens with this industry. And there's some good news in it, too. I mean, there are ways to constrain the industry that I think makes it less corrupt. I think Oklahoma is a big success story in the book. Mm -hmm. But um, we, ought to be, we ought to be cognizant that this is an industry that has reshaped the globe. Um, well, the book is Blowout. It's available today. And the author is Rachel Maddow, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. We'll be right back.